Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the session focused on Wikibase and Sparkle. We have two speakers for this session. First, we will have Bayan Hills with Wikibase, free, flexible, and collaborative link data for libraries. And after Bayan, we'll have Darnell Melvin with what came first, the Sparkle or the egg? <clears throat> Managing a Sparkle informed Wikidata productions for the special collections and archives. Before starting, just a few housekeeping items. I am Paloma Graziani and I will be facilitating this session. Elizabeth Rocky will be monitoring the chat in case anyone needs assistance. Please make sure to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask questions for the presenters. This session is being live streamed to the LD4 YouTube channel and recorded. The recording will be available in the 2021 playlist of the LD4 YouTube channel. Also notice that this session includes live transcription. This slide has links to some resources that might come handy. You have a link to the conference code of conduct. Um, that was the slide that was there and now it's not there anymore. Um, but um, if some, uh, Elizabeth, if you can just post the, the link to the conference code of conduct uh, on the chat and where else was there? The LD4 conference Twitter handle and this um, year's hashtag and a link to the Wikidata collaborative project. Also, a reminder that there is a Slack workspace for this year's conference and there is a specific tech support channel in case you have any technical difficulty. And now, yes, I will introduce our first speaker. Um, Bayan Hills is the Partner Relationship Manager at Wikimedia Deutschland, where she helps institutions using Wikidata and Wikibase. Bayan, you can start sharing your screen whenever you're ready. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. All right. Let me quickly share my screen. All right, uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, hi, everyone, uh, and welcome to this presentation on Wikibase as a free, flexible, and collaborative tool for linked data for libraries. So to give you a quick overview of what we will talk about today, I will start off by telling you a little bit about Wikimedia Deutschland. I will give a brief introduction to Wikidata before I um, move to explain the functions and features of Wikibase. I will show a few Wikibase showcase examples in the library world, delve into uh, the Wikibase ecosystem, and uh, wrap it up by telling you a little bit about the Wikibase spring release of 2021. So um, Wikimedia Deutschland is a nonprofit organization that works to give more people more access to more knowledge. We are the um, German chapter of the global Wikimedia movement and are based in Berlin. We have a dedicated software development department that focuses uh, on a community centered development approach and that works on uh, delivering innovative and uh, open source software solutions like Wikibase and Wikidata. So um, before we get to Wikibase, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Wikidata because it is the biggest example, um, it's the example of the biggest uh, Wikibase instance that we have. And I think it's a great way to show you some of the interesting things that you can um, do with Wikibase. Wikidata is a free and uh, open source knowledge base that contains general purpose data about the world. It's part of the Wikimedia projects. Um, it's a project that was launched in 2012 uh, by Wikimedia Deutschland and um, Wikidata stores structured data. Um, what is, or one of the things that is great about Wikidata is that it is multilingual. So that means that language, um, that means that data can be uploaded in different languages. Um, Wikidata is collaborative. <clears throat> so this means that anybody can upload and edit the data and um, users can also 
um, share and reuse this data because it is published uh, under a um, public domain license. Wikidata is also linked to other databases um, through what we call external identifiers. The data that it stores is based on statements and references, and it can be edited both by humans and machines. So uh, how is data modeled? In Wikidata, users model the world in terms of triples. So a triple structure contains item, property, and value. Here we have um, um, a Wikidata item uh, on Maya Angelou. And you can think of a Wikidata item as the equivalent of a Wikipedia article, but instead of having long string text here, it is replaced by structured data. Um, all of the items in Wikidata have unique uh, identifying numbers that are called Q numbers. Items can have statements um, that describe the concept in more detail. So um, a statement contains um, a property and a value. A property is like um, a category or a label for the data. So um, here the property of Maya Angelou is instance of and the value is human. Statements can contain several properties and values. So another property Maya Angelou has is award received, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, with the value uh, National Women's Hall of Fame. Now, statements can also include qualifiers and references to add additional information. So um, the qualifier here uh, lets us know that the award that she received, National Women's Hall of Fame, um, was received in 1998. And then we have a reference that shows us where does this claim come from and where does this information come from. So uh, the reference here <clears throat> directs us to uh, the website Women of the Whole. Now, all of the uh, items in Wikidata are linked to each other through their uh, queue numbers. So for instance, the Wikidata item on Maya Angelou is linked to the Wikidata item on her spouse. It's also linked to the Wikidata item on her place of birth, Saint Louis, as well as to the award that she received and to the instance of human. So um, we have this um, free and open source database and uh, it contains more than 94 uh, million data items. What can we possibly do with it? Um, a cool way to show us the um, power of Wikidata is um, the Sparkle query service. What this does is that it allows you to run a query across all of the data that is stored in Wikidata. And you can ask um, very detailed questions and retrieve answers to those questions. So for instance, you can run a query to um, ask what are the existing airports that are named after a person. And then you can add another criteria to it and say, well, I would like to see it color coded by gender and displayed on a map. So um, Sparkle Query Service is uh, <clears throat> an interesting tool to uh, interact with your data. Say um, you're interested in history, um, you can um, run a query to ask what's the cause of death of members of the noble family. And then you can have this data visualized in a way that um, shows you what were um, the leading causes of death. Or for instance, if you're interested in art, you can run a query to um, uh, ask what are the paintings by Vermeer that depict maps, and then Wikidata will generate a list of those paintings that match your criteria. So um, Sparkle Query Service is an interesting way to analyze data in different ways and also to visualize it. Now, this was a quick glimpse into um, Wikidata uh, and what you can do with it. Now, Wikibase is the software underlying Wikidata. 
Wikibase is a free open source and collaborative software launched in 2012 by Wikimedia Deutschland, and this is where it uh, continues to be maintained today. Um, <clears throat> Wikibase was originally created for the purpose of powering Wikidata, but um, as time went by and as more institutions started to get interested in using it, Wikibase um, kind of outgrew its original purpose. So today, not only does it power Wikidata, it also powers a wide range of projects outside of Wikimedia. Those projects usually <clears throat> involve catalogs or authority files or um, controlled vocabularies. So um, with Wikibase, you can uh, create your own personal Wikidata and users can um, create um, can use Wikibase to create and manage their own open linked knowledge bases. What attracts uh, many users to Wikibase is its flexible data model that allows them to create their own ontology and to build their data model in a way that would suit their collection's needs. Um, Wikibase has a media <laughs> has a media wiki interface, which means that users can uh, easily access and update data. And just like how we saw um, with Wikidata, if you're using Wikibase, you can also interact and um, visualize the data by using the Sparkle query service. So Wikibase is ideal for structured data collections that need a flexible data model, it's ideal for linking databases to external sources. Um, it's a great solution for collaborative projects where you have um, multiple people that need to edit the data and also for projects where data needs to be edited both by humans and machines. Wikibase um, is also great for projects where uh, multilingual labeling is needed and also data-oriented projects with controlled vocabularies, large catalogs, and authority control. So um, what does all of this mean for libraries? Not only does Wikibase offer a practical solution for libraries that have lots of structured data that needs a flexible data model, Wikibase also provides a powerful tool for libraries to um, tie into a vast network of linked open data where they can um, easily add to and tap into the knowledge that is stored in Wikidata and also other Wikibase instances in the Wikibase ecosystem. Um, Wikibase is increasingly being evaluated by libraries as a tool to help them connect to the world of linked open data and increase access uh, to their data collections. And uh, the library community in particular has been very proactive of experimenting with Wikibase. Um, there are seven national libraries that have run substantial uh, Wikibase pilot projects. Um, amongst them is the German National Library and the French National Library. Um, so the GND meets uh, Wikibase pilot project at the uh, German National Library is the first kind of Wikibase project at a major national library. The GND is the uh, German language integrated authority file. It is um, used by librarians to organize data about um, people, subject headings, and corporate bodies. Um, the GND is mainly used by librarians, but it's also increasingly being used by uh, museums and archives. And the goal of the German National Library is to facilitate the contribution to GND from non-librarians and to open GND for all areas of GLAM and collaboration with open community projects like Wikidata and Wikipedia. 
Um, however, the software that they're using is not very suitable for their needs. And in this regard, Wikibase was able to offer a solution uh, allowing them to open uh, up the GND. And um, being part of the Wikibase ecosystem uh, can bring them closer to the goal of using GND as the backbone of a semantic web for culture and science. Um, another example is the uh, Wikibase pilot project for the French national entities file at the French National Library and the Higher uh, Education Bibliographic Agency. Um, the French national entities file uh, was launched in 2007 and it's a central database for entities of BNF and ABES and also other um, cultural research and GLAM institution. And um, what it aims to do is to break down the barriers between separate databases in order to improve their av availability on the web and um, their reuse by uh, communities. And um, Wikibase, which is uh, viewed as a graph of interconnected entities that is based on an open source solution and uh, devised for uh, collaborative creation is a tool that uh, presents um, a multitude of advantages for the scope of uh, the French National Entities Project. Um, the French National Library and um, the Higher Education um, Bibliographic Agency are running a second Wikibase pilot project um, to evaluate uh, Wikibase for the future metadata production software for the French National Library that is called uh, Noemi. And um, it will include cataloging, um, format administration, data processing features, uh, user rights manager, and search engine. Noemi was started in 2017 uh, with the aim to replace a 20-year-old software. And um, the French National Library was um, inspired by what, by what other institutions were doing with Wikibase, like the German National Library. And they decided uh, to run a, a proof of concept to um, evaluate the, the feasibility of Wikibase for Noemi. Now, Wikibase offers um, the BNF a solution because uh, it is made to store structured data, it has a flexible data model, and it also offers uh, data monitoring, statistic calculation, and data history management, um, all of which are features that the BNF wanted for um, their um, future metadata production software. Um, so we are going to delve uh, a little bit into the Wikibase uh, ecosystem. We are um, currently working to foster a uh, thriving Wikibase ecosystem. And uh, in this ecosystem, different Wikibase instances will be linked between each other and uh, will be linked back to Wikidata. And the idea is um, for those different instances to be able to share their knowledge uh, between each other. So for example, uh, Wikidata can share its general purpose data uh, about the world with other instances, um, while a um, Wikibase instance can share its uh, specialized knowledge on a specific topic with um, other Wikibase instances and with Wikidata as well. And uh, what this um, Wikibase ecosystem can do is increase access for um, the sum of knowledge. It can uh, facilitate collaboration between institutions, create new connections between data and um, strengthen the knowledge ecosystem as a whole. Um, so the 
full power or uh, full magic of Wikibase can be unlocked when those different Wikibase instances can talk to each other and link content and uh, query across instances and reuse ontology. All of this um, can fall under what we call federation or federated Wikibases. Now, different people can mean <clears throat> different things when they talk about federation, but the majority tend to be tend to reference to the linking of content between uh, their Wikibase and Wikidata. Um, federated properties is uh, one step towards uh, this direction of federation. This um, feature became possible uh, thanks to the Wikibase spring release of this year. And what it does is it allows users um, with a newly set Wikibase instance use the existing properties in Wikidata. So the advantage of this is if you're setting your own Wikibase instance because you want to experiment with Wikibase, um, this feature can save you time and effort um, because you don't have to start from scratch and can use the uh, existing properties from Wikidata. It does, however, have a limitation um, because if you already have local properties, then you cannot enable this um, feature. So ideally, this would work the best with a newly set and an empty Wikibase instance. We are, however, working on uh, making it possible to mix federated properties with local properties um, within the same Wikibase instance. Um, well, I just mentioned the Wikibase spring release, so let me tell you a little bit more about that. The Wikibase spring release of uh, 2021 improves the installation and setup process of Wikibase. It also improves um, the updating and maintenance uh, process. It includes um, federated properties feature that we saw just now. Um, it is compatible um, with Wikibase manifest extension, and it has an integrated think back feature. So uh, with this new Wikibase release, we wanted to provide new documentation on how to install Wikibase manually and also how to install it with Docker images and um, also how to update your Wikibase instance. Um, the latest Wikibase um, uh, release version is uh, compatible with manifest extension. And so one problem has been that there are several important tools that work um, with Wikidata, but are hard to get them to work with Wikibase. And uh, what this extension does is that it can expose automatically discovered configuration information about your Wikibase instance to um, tool builders. So this comes in handy for institutions that want to build their own tools um, for their Wikibase instance. Um, now, because Wikibase is an open source software that um, anybody can download uh, without needing permission from Wikimedia Deutschland or even uh, letting uh, Wikimedia Deutschland um, um, know about it, we introduced the Wikibase um, Think Back feature, which uh, gives users the option to share anon anonymized data about their Wikibase instance um, with Wikimedia. Um, and this is um, a way for, for us to understand more how uh, Wikibase is being used and for example, what um, versions are people uh, running their Wikibase instances on? And uh, we plan to um, make this anon anonymized data public so that um, other people can also learn about the Wikibase ecosystem as well. Um, if you're interested in Wikibase, you can try WBStack. 
W BSTAC um, was developed by one of our engineers, Adam Shoreland, in uh, his volunteering capacity. And um, WB Stack is like a hosted service for Wikibase. And what, what it can allow you to do is to um, have your, or set up your own Wikibase instance without needing to install Wikibase. So this um, is a great way to lower the um, barrier entry because you don't need to have technical skills um, to explore uh, Wikibase. WBStack combines media wiki, Wikibase, BlazeGraph, query service within one single platform. Um, it's designed for a quick startup and um, you can find information on how to create your account on the homepage of the website. Um, and um, so far, there were eight libraries that have um, used uh, WBStack, like the National Library of Netherlands and the National Library of Finland. And um, it's a great way for institutions to um, explore Wikibase without needing to um, wait until they secure funding or needing to commit lots of time uh, from their development team. So um, this was it for my presentation on Wikibase. Um, thank you all very much. And I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. Thanks so much, Bayan. That was, um, that was great. And I, I bet there's many of the attendants that are going to go back and, and go and look how to install their own Wikibase instances, especially like Wikibase um, stack being like such a low barrier. So we have some questions in 15 minutes so that we have uh, time for the next speaker. Um, let's see, the first question, uh, what is the Wikimedia Deutschland thinking about the dependence of Wikibase on BlazeGraph, which is no longer supported by its original developers? Um, this is a good question. Um, I'm not um, an engineer, so I don't have the uh, technical capacity to answer it, but I would be happy to take note of it and um, pass it on um, to our development team. Also, if you contact me on the, um, my email, then I can uh, get back to the person who asked this question. Uh, I can also put my email in the chat. Great. Also, we have a um, um, Wikibase, Wikidata, Wikibase channel on the conference Slack, and I bet many of the part, the conference participants will love to to learn <laughs> more about the answer. So, if you want to um, to post it there, I will um, add you to the Slack if you are not there yet. Um, the next question: um, Does uh, Wikibase is stack allow for local properties to be created or are properties limited to existing Wikidata properties? For instance, uh, using the federated properties. Um, you can create your own uh, local properties um, with WB stack, but then again, um, you will encounter the same. So if you want to mix those local properties with the federated properties, you will encounter the same issues that you would if you are using Wikibase. So the answer is yes, but um, you cannot mix it with federated properties. Thank you. Um, next question, and I see on the chat that um, there's going to be interest on the on the answer for uh, the Blaze Graph question. So yeah. <laughs> um, when was Wikibase first released as a tool for others to use? Um, so originally it was, um, it, it's an open source software. So ever since it was launched in uh, 2012, anybody technically can use it. Um, I think one of the early uh, adapters of Wikibase for Rhizom, um, and they started in 2013. Uh, and then as time went by, it became more common to um, use Wikibase um, outside of Wikimedia. 
but there were never limitations on um, who can use it. It's just that it got a bit easier to use uh, with time. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question uh, on the Q&A, and then I know that there's other questions on, on the chat, but I'm just going to read this one. So if known, what are the URLs for the Wikibase instances uh, of the three examples presented? I can find information about the Wikibase instances, but it's harder to just find the URLs for the instances themselves. So I guess, are they public or are these internal uh, tools to the institutions? I'm sorry, can you just uh, repeat the last part of the question? Are, are, are the instances public or are they just uh, internal tools to the institutions? So um, these uh, instances are still, um, they didn't go live yet. Like the, the German okay. National Library is still in the phase of implementation. Um, the French National Library um, with the uh, French National uh, Entities file, uh, that's still in the phase of development. So they did, uh, didn't go live yet. Okay, thank you. Um, there was early on the chat um, a question about if you could share the query URL for the nobility causes of the um, that you have mentioned earlier, if you had it handy. I don't have it at hand, unfortunately, but maybe. Um... So I could post it on uh, one of the Slack channels. And um, again, uh, for uh, the person who is interested in having it, um, please feel free to also contact me on uh, the email that I listed. Um, I would be happy to get that to you. Great, yeah, thank you. Um, ooh, we have two more questions. Is it possible to import Wikidata items? I already uploaded into Wikibase. This um, is, I mean, as far as I know, again, I'm not a technical expert. Um, in, I think that technically it could be possible, but it's much harder uh, right now to import items than it is to import properties. Thank you for the answer. And sorry for the sound. <laughs> So there's some track outside of my house right now. Um, one more question. What has user support look like for Wikibase stack or Wikibase? What do users do when they run into an issue they cannot solve themselves? What do users do uh, when they run into an issue that they can't use themselves? Um, yeah, um, this question is about user support. For WB stack? Yeah, or Wikibase. Um, so for um, WB stack, um, I think uh, on the homepage, you can, um, like if you run into any issues, you can uh, contact the developer of it. Um, you can have his, um, you can see his contact information there. And if you run into issues um, with Wikibase, um, for example, we have um, an institutional requirement page where, uh, you can let us know um, the issues that you're having, if you have a special requests for special features. Um, and um, we always like to um, hear feedback from our users and hear feedback from institutions that use Wikibase. Um, I can also drop that uh, in the chat. Thank you. Uh, and also, Jackie, she, it's, um, sharing sharing um, a URL for for help from Media Wiki. So I bet that's what you were going to share on the chat as well, right, Bayan? Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have any more questions, but since we have a few minutes, I was thinking that it would be interesting to hear if anybody in the audience has already tested um, installing their own local Wikibase uh, instance and if they want to unmute their se themselves and, and share their experience. 
you can put a plus one on the chat and I'm aware you cannot unmute yourself, but we can help you. Or what about this? Can um, people share on the chat if they have installed their own wiki-based instance, even if they have not done anything with it yet? Okay, we have a yes. Steve, you want to you want to unmute? Uh, I don't really have a lot to say other than um, I use Docker to install it maybe a year and a half ago successfully. I think more of my problems were with getting Docker to work than Wikibase, but I only played around with uh, creating a few properties, so I, I didn't really use it seriously. And I also tried WB Stack, which was way, way easier. <laughs> So I highly recommend that. Thanks so much for sharing that. That's that's a good tip. Uh, we we have tried Docker at our institution and we haven't done anything with it yet. So that's that's why I know a lot of people might be curious to install it. I had not tried um, SV uh, SW stack yet. So thank you for the tip, Steve. Um, and we have uh, a few more questions on this sudden. So do separate Wikibase implementations run the risk of becoming separate data silos, similar to individual library ILS implementations, or can separate Wikibase implementations be linked with Wikidata? Um, yeah, Wikibase um, instances can uh, be linked to uh, Wikidata. There are several ways to do it. Um, one way would be, imagine you have a data set and uh, you have persistent identifiers. Then uh, you can link those identifiers to um, Wikidata. This is what we would call uh, external identifiers in Wikidata. And um, this is a great way to kind of like redirect traffic to uh, your database and um, increase its discoverability. Um, another way of linking would be is if you um, use the federated um, properties feature. But then it has its limits because um, if you already have properties in there, um, for now it's, it's not available. Thank you, we're waiting. Oop. So we have um, a few more minutes. Uh, Karen Huang and, and Sara, both from um, the Semantic Lab, um, are sharing their wiki, their wiki based instance main, um, main page. Um, data model is forever in flux. I bet that's true for many. <laughs> People that are testing their own Wikibase um, instances. And then uh, Janet Ho is asking, but it, is it an institution's choice about whether to link with Wikidata? Um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, this is um, up to the institution um, because you don't have to you don't have to put your persistent identifiers on Wikidata. And um, for example, the um, feature of federated properties, um, you can choose whether or not you want to activate it or not. Um, and there have even been um, examples of um, institutions that have private um, Wikibase instances. But we do, of course, encourage the linking uh, back to Wikidata. Of course. Well, thank you. Um, if anybody else has any question from Bayan, please, please send it on the Slack um, because we really encourage 
um, all these conversations and all these discussions that start during the session to, to continue on the conference Slack. There is a channel for Wikidata and Wikibase. And I am now going to introduce to our next speaker. Thank you so much, Bayan, for sharing. Um, sorry, I just unmute myself. Uh, the work that you guys are doing at, Wikime at Wikimedia. Um, so let's see. Darnell Melvin is the Special Collections and Archives Metadata Librarian and an assistant professor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Um, he is responsible for managing metadata activities, remediation projects, and metadata documentation. His work explores linked data implementation, metadata remediation tools and services, workflow engineering, and optimizing and sem semantic and syntactic interoperability. Darnell, uh, you have a very intriguing title for your presentation. So go ahead. I see that you're already sharing your screen, so you can take it away. Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All righty. Well, uh, my name is Darnell Melvin, and today I would like to share with you um, some of my experiences using Wikidata Query Service and Sparkle as a program development and discovery tool. I'll start by discussing the evolution of linked data activities at UNLV Libraries, introduce the UNLV PCC Wikidata Pilot Wiki and programming activities, then move on to a Sparkle deep dive using the Wikidata query service and conclude with a brief discussion on challenges and future opportunities incorporating Wikidata into existing metadata workflows. So uh, let's, get, let's start at the beginning, shall we? So linked data activities at UNLV began in early 2013 uh, when a linked data study group was formed to investigate linked data landscape and to experiment transforming digital collections metadata into structured linked data. This group was a cross departmental collaboration with representation from the cataloging department, our special collections public services, our special collections technical services, and our digital collections department. Early experiments included metadata cleanup projects using Open Refine, transforming metadata management of name entities and their relationships using the Timatrez control, controlled vocabulary server, and the development of a virtuoso triple store. These preliminary activities within this group were the precursor to a 2016 linked data pilot called Navigator. The Navigator project investigated opportunities to express relationships in addition to describing information resources. Using archival data from our Jewish Heritage Project, a linked data visualization tool was developed to explore people, corporate bodies, digital objects, and archival collections via a graph. Um, during the early phases of this project, it was realized that the metadata creation and management workflows would need to be modified for the project to proceed. And these modifications included conducting in-depth research on the subject during the time of agent record creation, capturing all preferred names, titles, alternative names, relationships to other things, and other information to disambiguate the other entities selecting an appropriate ontology for data modeling and representation, and to create a workflow for URI management. In 2017, I was hired, and at that time, work began to introduce cross-departmental workflows, which enabled large-scale digitization. A phase one scanner was purchased, Archival resource keys, a type of persistent identifier were being minted for all archival collections and digital objects within the repository. And metadata production shifted to focus on data reuse from existing sources. 
These included inventories, databases, finding aids, and collection guides. So this brings us up to speed. Um, let's move on to the current link data activities at UNLV Libraries. So currently at UNLV Special Collections and Archives, we are midway through a repository migration to Islandora. And later in 2021, the Special Collections and Archives will launch its public interface called the Special Collections and Archives Portal. The portal is a new discovery system that provides an integrated view, which combines an archive space public user interface side by side with other digital collections and objects. This new system was designed to handle preservation activities and workflows, provides access through various views, and its metadata was designed and aligned with the FAIR data principles to ensure our metadata creation and management is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. For developers, the system provides an OEI PMH endpoint, a Drupal JSON API, and the release of a public Sparkle endpoint is planned in this next phase of our implementation. In January 2021, UNLV Special Collections and Archives joined the PCC Wikidata pilot, where we've been investigating ways to further expose um, and explore um, linked data principles in our metadata design and practices happening in special collections archives and rare book libraries. Also in January, a Wikimedia in resident was hired for a term position to explore Wikidata tools and ways to expose our underrepresented collections. The project runs were um, short sprints and to date numerous regional contributions in Wikidata have been made including contributions related to the mines of Southern Nevada, local history of Las Vegas, historic newspapers of Nevada, and local historical businesses, just to name a few. For uh, full information on our project and the program um, has been documented on the UNLV Wiki site, which let me copy the URL and I'll put it in the chat. that I get bring you to it. So here's uh, some screenshots of our um, special collections and archives portal that will be released um, later this year. This is the home page. Here's some shots of the archival uh, collections view. And then here goes our agent record view. Um, as you see, it has a description, uh, has external links pointing out to NACO records and other various um, authority sources. And there's some relationships you could see there. Um, as you can see in the bottom of the slide, you can see some pictures that's relating to, um, in this example, I'm using Harry Reid, um, former Senator. Uh, and there's some images related to him. Um, the cool thing about this system is you can also not only search by subject or by genre or some various facets, you can also traverse the graph via the relationships, which is actually um, pretty cool. Um, so now let's take some time to explore Wikidata using Sparkle and the Wikidata query service. Uh, the link at the bottom of the slide will take you to a Wikidata site where all examples have been marked up for easy reuse. You can follow along and rerun those queries locally um, by clicking on the try it link at the bottom of the code block. Uh, this will redirect you to the query, um, into the query service where you can run it by pressing the blue play button at the bottom left side of the, um, um, uh, of the interface. So there goes the link uh, to the examples and we will go there. Uh, can you guys see this Wikidata uh, markup uh, wiki page? 
Okay, perfect. So let me tell you how it works. Um, in this page, I've organized Sparkle queries that are very glam centric um, by five concepts. This is a work in progress and I'll be constantly adding to it as I uh, explore more ways and find various use cases that are unique to our collections. So um, concept one is discovering and using search conditions. We're also gonna be talking about combining different search conditions, um, exploring Wikidata using the archives at or the oral histories at property, um, and also explore maps with our results view, and then also timelines uh, for our results view. Um, also in the page at the bottom in the second section, there are some helpful links I found useful um, that you guys might want to check out. Uh, some of those include the full list of Wikidata prefixes. Um, and using, if you're querying data in the Wikidata query service, um, using the, its own interface, those prefixes, you don't have to put them in. But if you're using some kind of external program to execute the Sparkle query through the endpoint, um, you're going to need to put those um, prefix declarations into your um, query file. Um, so for folks who are using, say, something like Apache Jenna um, or some other tool. Um, I'll also be, uh, there's also documentation on uh, query optimization services, as well as the RDF gas API documentation, which I just started experimenting with, and I find it very, very useful um, and very efficient. Um, and then there's some Wikidata visualization options, a link to uh, another wiki that has some markup as well. Um, so moving on to the first query is um, select an academic journal by article by subject, and the subject is linked data. What I'm going to do is actually break down the Sparkle query itself as it's written. Hopefully you guys can see it. I've also shared that wiki so you can actually follow along in the code block. Um, so there's basically three or four, one, two, three, four. There's probably about four parts of a Sparkle query. The first is the prefix where you declare the namespaces, of course. Um, the second will be your selection or your construct, your ask or your description command. For these queries, these are graph to table queries. So we'll primarily today be using select clauses. Um, and so this first query is that the second part is the where. And then last is there's like aggregations or if you want to order it and sort, you have those abilities as well. So what we're doing here is I'm selecting distinct items. I want a variable called DOI URI, we'll go deeper into that a little bit later, and a variable called the title. I also want the authors, and I'm using a function called group concatenate, which is using a delimiter of a comma space to actually group the authors together so there won't be another, you don't have to repeat the triple for the same item. Um, we're binding it to a new variable called authors, and we're um, also binding a published in, so, and the publication date. Okay, and so basically that's what the first line is, the P31, which is an instance of an academic journal article. Uh, the P31 has another variable defined called item type. And I'm also taking the RDF label, binding it to a variable called title. The next sentence is the item has a main subject and the subject is uh, linked data, which is the Q515701. Um, the item also has a variable called main subject, which will bind all the subject headings of those whatever appears in that results. Um, then there's also the author where we're getting the author we're getting the author's label, and then we're getting very we're getting um, the published in dates, and we're getting also an RDF label. Um, 
Also, lastly, this P577 is the publication date. And then within this optional curly brackets, if there's a DOI, I want that. And then moving underneath, I binded the DUI to, um, and then what I'm doing is concatenating it to the full URL. So in the result list, you will have a referenceable URL that you could use of uh, the DUI of the works that are in the results. And that is actually what's being um, binded to this new variable called DOI underscore URI. And then I'm filtering out the languages on the author label, title and publication to only show English. I'm also filtering out the main subject. So I only wanna show things that are linked data. And then I'm also only wanna show academic journal articles. This service Wikidata label is the Wikibase label service, which help pulls um, labels for say like your descriptions or your, um, your item labels. Uh, since I pulled the labels directly from the RDF itself, technically I really don't need the um, service, this service um, clause right here in the thing. And then I'm grouping by, by those variables. Since you're using a group concatenation, you have to use an aggregate. And then I'm ordering by the publication date and descending order. And there we go. So it's actually a really cool um, way to discover, use this. Um, also in the Wikidata query service, you can actually export or link um, this data. So you could use this and incorporate this into your workflow. And this is some of the strategies that I've been using um, for discovery and just to discover new knowledge about our own personal collections. So the second query we're gonna go on is actually one of my first queries I started tinkering with um, when I was getting deep in the sparkle, which was the graph identified researchers within an organization um, used to identify potential collaborators. So this is like, you know, I was like, let me see what, what, what my colleagues within my university, what's their research interest? And maybe there's a collaboration that we could do. Um, and the same thing is similar graph. We're selecting variables. What's new on this clause is we're actually, I've added a color code and we're binding it to a variable called RGB, which we'll be able to later reuse in the graph. Um, similar thing, instance of, so I'm grabbing the labels. Um, I, I'm looking for uh, universities, um, which is UNLV. Um, I'm looking for if they were their employers, their, and then I'm also getting a variable called their occupation. Uh, if they have an image, I'll also bind it. It's optional. If they don't have an image, that's fine. And then also we have that ORCID ID. And so I'm binding and concatenating it again. So we'll get that ORCID ID and then you'll have in the results um, a URI. So um, we run it. And here goes the graph right here of my colleagues in the university. Um, this was really helpful. I really didn't know. So in the computer science department, there were, there's a, a machine learning researcher um, who I didn't even know about. We're at a totally different college. So it was like, uh, I got to learn a little bit about his work uh, and some of the stuff that he's doing um, and possibly uh, could down the road, you know, maybe find a collaboration with him that may be using our structured linked data um, to train his machine learning models. So this was really great. Another thing I'd like to point out is you see in the first line of the code of the Sparkle query, there's that hash default view. That initiates the visualization engine within um, uh, Wikidata. So if you just want um, uh, the table results, you could just release that code, um, delete it, and then rerun it, and which will just give you um, the results as you can see, if they have uh, ORCID IDs, you now have the ORCID IDs. So you could go look at their works, further works, or um, you know, um, if you wanna do some federated querying, you could use the ORCID um, 
the ORCID uh, uh, endpoint and federate that search with these guys, you know? So um, really powerful stuff you could, you could use. Um, our third query is um, selecting popular music genres and their subgenres. And this was an interesting query. I was tinkering with it a little bit. Originally, I wrote it to only show the instance of, but I said, no, I want actually a full list, which includes the subgenres. So this P31 in the where clause slash the P279 asterisk is really saying, give me the instance of or subclass of whatever um, the object is in the triple. And in this instance, the Q188451 is music genres. So um, I'm binding the instance of to a new variable. So the values of the P31s, I'm binding it so we can reuse. I'm filtering it so I only want to see the um, uh, music genres because there's also music forms and stuff that might also appear. So I'm kind of do using the filter to pre-process this data a little bit to clean it up. Um, and then I'm taking the subclass, the binding that variable so we can reuse it. And then I have the optional inception dates and countries of origin. And then with the countries of origin, I'm filtering to show American popular uh, popular music. Um, and so running that query will give you um, a list of about 580 results. And there you go. Um, you got the item description, you got a subclass with their item number, a label, their description, and an inception date. Uh, this is one way to explore uh, music. This might be helpful for a music librarian or say somebody in the humanities. These kinds of queries are, are actually really, I think, really helpful. Um, so here goes a similar query, but now this one is actually using the gas service, which is built into Wikidata. And it's actually going to be traversing um, the tree, similar, um, the music genres with popular music um, and their sub genres. And this time I'm actually going to uh, visualize it using the graph visualization um, template that's built into Wikidata. And this is actually a pretty large graph. Um, I, again, I've color coded it. Uh, to so you can actually see the subgenres. These are the subgenres. As you appear, there'll be this white node in the center that is popular music, and these are the genres that spin off of it. And as this graph actually renders, you'll start seeing these hubs will start appearing. You can actually start seeing them now. Um, and some of them might be, I'm sure most of it might be like something like rock. Yeah, like this one, if you zoom in, there goes rock and their sub genres or pop music and the sub genres. Um, hip hop and the sub genres, you know, it's really, it's, it's a really cool tool to a uh, way to traverse a tree there's, you can actually do it for multiple directions. Uh, it's, it's actually very, very, very powerful. All right. So the second concept we're working with is combining different search conditions. Now with this one, um, I'm combining, if uh, graph people whose field of work is either linked data, linked open data, or semantic web. Now, for some of you who are more experienced with Sparkle, you could see there's, a, there's some redundancies within the nested union clauses. One caveat I have been noticing with the Wikidata query service is um, optimization. Um, if I ran this query, uh, query number five, this way, it runs a lot faster than it runs if I would have cleaned it up. Like technically the only thing once I declared the variables in the first 
subsection of the where clause, I only really needed to add the subject lines, those P01s, like link data, semantic web. Um, those are and those are the only things I needed to add. Um, but I for 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 actually optimizing the query service, I actually just rewrote out those variables. Um, and I'm binding, and you can see they're being binded and filtered before the final closing of the where. Um, which actually, after the results are combined, they're then doing a final filter by, on the field of work field. And then, as you see, we're calling the Wikibase label service. All right, so here we go. Here goes a graph of 124 researchers with um, who intersect linked open data, linked data, and the semantic web. Now, again, if you delete the actual first line, that default graph view and rerun it, I've binded their ORCID ID. So now the researchers, this list, you got an ORCID ID that you can now use to um, learn more, reintroduce it in, in your system or in your um, your data pipeline. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's really cool. It's really cool. Uh, we're on, we're about at okay 30 minutes. I want to move on um, down to an interesting um, concept which is concept three, which is Wikidata expiration using the archives app or the oral histories app property. Now, um, these properties have been used in the GLAM community to connect collections um, to the concepts in Wiki um, data and in the in, 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 in Wiki based instances. Um, for this one, it's a very simple kind of clause. Um, there's actually some things you haven't seen before. So I'm digging down into it. I'm not only just getting properties now, we're going to dig down and get some of those quantifiers and assigning them to var variables as well. Um, and as you can see, I've got an item with that's being archives that, and I got a variable, and then the archives that has a archives at, and then it's UNLV libraries. Now, I within optional clauses, I'm binding um, the variables that are named as, there's a line called, a variable called named as, inventory number, and described at URL, which is actually the uh, URI that's being used um, to describe uh, that item. So as we run it in the item label, you can see all of our um, all of our archives at stuff here, the description, and then you have right here the collections that those items, those people, or those uh, entities, um, how they relate to some kind of archival collections in our holding, which gives you our inventory number and our arcs, which will redirect you to a PDF that describes the archival collection. Oral histories that is a new property that was approved about three, maybe about two months, three months ago, which is now basically similar to the archives app, but is mainly for connecting uh, entities and wiki data to oral histories. And as you see, I got that P6600 uh, and I'm binding it to a variable. And then I'm digging down to the oral history at UNLV. And then I'm going into the, see the PQ prefix. I'm going into those quantifiers now and then I'm binding them to variables. Um, and then I'm filtering out the description at um, with the N two T, so I only want to show things with arcs, and voila! So here goes a, a list of our oral histories um, that we've been creating during um, our PCC Wiki Data pilot. 
Um, so there are some you could do, you could use the Wikidata query service for data exploration with maps. You could use it. Um, one of uh, ones that I use was visualize rivers uh, within Nevada counties, um, which was a really cool visualization. Started thinking about, you know, my whole strategy was like, what's unique to the state? I mean, I'm in a special collections. Our collection strengths are in Nevada, the Mountain West um, region. We're a public university. How can we share knowledge that are held in our collections with out in the Wikidata world and stuff? And so these kinds of Sparkle queries got me thinking, well, what's already out there in Wikidata? It's like, why reinvent the web and stuff if these concepts already exist? Or if I need to create one, we'll create one. Um, so uh, in this one, I'm asking for variables. Uh, as this time, I'm introducing a new command called values. Uh, in the Sparkle protocol in the 1.1 with values, you're now able to uh, query against a list of variables. And as you can see, I have the Wikidata entities for all the counties within the state of Nevada. Um, I'm getting a P31 instance of lakes, and then I have uh, coordinates, and then the locations, and I'm binding the coordinates to a map layer. So now you could filter, you could see in this map, let me scroll up, you could filter in this map, you can actually, these rivers, now you could sort them by county. Like I'm in Clark County, there are no lakes, oh, this is lakes. There are no lakes in Clark County. And actually it was kind of funny because I was like, well, what about Lake Mead, you know? And going into Wikidata, it made me realize, according to the instance of the P31 and Wikidata on Lake Mead, Lake Mead is actually a reservoir. It's not a lake. So it doesn't appear in there. So actually the closest uh, lake, according to Wikidata in mine is actually probably in uh, Lincoln County. So, yeah, because I'm in Las Vegas, so Lincoln County, it looks like there's three lakes in this data, in this data set. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then this was another one. This is actually a really cool one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This one is actually querying based off um, a radius on a geographic point and stuff. And what we're doing is uh, getting uh, the radius around, what is it? The welcome fabulous Las Vegas sign. So, and then what I'm filtering is, uh, I think restaurants, yeah. So here goes the restaurants around like a four mile radius around the welcome Las Vegas sign. This is another uh, this is another opportunity to explore places that may be represented in your locations. So, uh, and then lastly, I want to just talk a little bit about the timeline view. Um, this was actually a really cool thing. One of our sprints in our PCC Wikidata pilot um, was the historical newspapers of Nevada that were um, a part of the Chronicling of America project and the National Newspaper Program. Um, this query um, is giving you a timeline of the run of these historical newspapers. So that's another way. Um, you know, um, um, let's see, how are we on time? Moderators, how are we good on time? Um, we have 15 minutes. Okay. So um, let's see, I skipped around. Um, there's a couple other ones. Selecting written works and academic journal articles by subject. That's another um, thing that you could reuse um, for expiration. Um, we did that one linked. So that I think are pretty much most of, uh, 
the examples that I was going to be um, uh, I was going to be going over today. Um, on that note, is, are there any questions? Thanks, Arnel. Thanks so much for dissecting your Sparkle queries and, and doing them live, which is pretty nerve wracking. <laughs> uh, we have a few questions, but we also have a bunch of uh, people on the chat say, saying thank you for sharing this. Um, they are definitely very useful. So um, one of the questions, how do end users create their own ad hoc Sparkle queries? Yeah, so, you know, depending on their experience with Sparkle, some people like to learn by example. Um, some people, you know, might have an idea. A lot of the queries have been um, you know, basic concepts have been um, already written and you really just need to reapply them to a new research question. Like I remember somebody shared a link to uh, the wiki page that has like common queries and stuff like that. That's an example. Um, these ones that I've created, I'm, I'm trying to use this as a learning tool, um, a teaching tool. Uh, for um, based on concepts, if you go to our wiki, um, if you go to the wiki, um, uh, our wiki data UNLV PCC pilot, there are additional Sparkle queries that I didn't show, um, such as federated searches, um, querying DBpedia against um, wiki data. Um, uh, other kinds of Sparkle queries as well. So I recommend going to that. You, the link is at the bottom of my last slide um, and you're, uh, you're more than welcome. If on this, on the examples wiki page that I have created, and if there isn't a Sparkle query or if there's a use case that the library community might find helpful, please get in contact with me because I'm, you know, I'm exploring new ways with Sparkle to how to like, generate knowledge, how to, and then how to feed it back into an existing workflow. Like currently right now, um, we're for our local, we're not a, we're not a, a PCC uh, member currently. And so the barrier for creating name authorities were kind of high for us as an institution. And so Wikidata is like a great way to create um, so-called name authorities that we can link to in our repository. Um, those use those Q number URIs uh, in our local instance and then build upon it. Um, and then the future goal is, you know, once our Sparkle endpoint is live, we'll be able to federate the data in our Sparkle endpoint with stuff that we've enhanced with Wikidata um, through the Wikidata querying, the Wikidata query service and stuff. But yeah, just start with, you know, a basic Sparkle query. Um, I write them in iteration. And so you get what your, your targets where you're trying to get on the graph. And then, you know, you might want to add complexity to it, you know, and then um, you can filter it. Thank you. Um, we have a couple more questions. One, uh, again, beautiful work. Thanks. Thanks so much, Arnel. Um Asking about if the presentation slides are going to be available somewhere so that they can go uh, through them in detail. Yeah, so I've put the slides in a couple different places. Um, if you look on the slide page, there were links to the presentation slides in the slides. I've also uploaded it to your scheduler. So you could download the slides to the scheduler. Um, and then all my presentations and research projects, I put in open science framework. Um, so if you want to go to osf.io and then search by my, me, you can actually find all my presentation slides, probably going back to maybe like 2014 or so. Um, so yeah. Um, and then hold on, let me just copy uh, the slides again here. Oh yeah, it's not. I'm trying to copy from my screencast. Uh, UNLV, where are you? I'll just copy it here. Uh, concepts. 
So here you go. Oh, actually, that's going to take you down the page, but that's the page um, that will give you the concepts as well. So yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, we have a couple more questions by now. Have you thought of a query from end for end users who have no technical ability, which uh, it's going to be most of the library users? Yeah, so luckily, you know, with if you look at here um, with our concepts, I've marked up this wiki. Um, here is um, documentation on our wiki data pilot with the PCC, which has like best practices, general help. Our Wikimedia in resident, Violet Fox, um, she created some in, um, supplemental instructional guides on uh, quick statements for beginners, cradle help. And then I've also linked the sparkle examples by concepts. Basically, you know, um, these markup wikis are really good teaching tools. Um, this is how I plan to use it within my organization because there's only a handful of us who may have these sparkle experiences, but um, marking it up in a wiki project page not only gives you some transparency, but people in the community can reuse it. So I recommend, you know, folks uh, marking up wiki pages and linking it to various places like, you know, you could get to UNLV's um, wiki page through the PCC participant page. Um, so, uh, which is here, do, do, do. there goes the PCC pilot. So if you click on that participants um, tab, that'll give you a list of all the participants and the um, who are currently in the PCC wiki data pilot. Thank you. More questions here. At the top of your presentation, you mentioned collaboration. Have you worked with other departments at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, outside of the libraries who might have interest in linked data? What resources, time and staff have uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas libraries allocated to the new special collections and archives portal and the PCC Wikidata pilot? So it's two questions in one. Okay, uh, let me look at that again. So um, as far as um, working with other departments, um, we have worked with our special collections technical services um, outside of the libraries. Um, we have it, I'm not, uh, my work is not public service oriented. Um, and so I'm more on the system side. So I haven't had to do any kind of like outreach um, as of yet, but we do have um, active um, folks who conduct Wikipedia edit-a-thons in, um, in, uh, in our libraries that are hosted for outside and community co contribution. Um, one, of, one of the ideas that I was thinking about is maybe coordinating a Wikidata edit-a-thon simultaneously with a Wikipedia edit-a-thon so we could create the structured data that they will then incorporate into the Wikipedia articles and stuff. Um, haven't done it yet, but these are some talks that I'm you know, starting to try to plan and maybe uh, you know, strategize on. Um, and then the second part, uh, what resources, time is you going to allocate special collections on archives, Wikidata pilot? So the resources, um, we were actually, uh, uh, I sought out um, uh, funding for our library advisory board and was um, awarded um, two rounds of funding, which funded a part-time Wikimedia and a resident. Um, Violet Fox served as the Wikimedia in resident and just completed a six month residency done in two rounds, six sprints. Um, as far as moving forward, I've from now on all local names until we become, um, join the PCC, which is in the plans for our institution, our current workflow now is when the data is available and, and it warrants notoriety, uh, we will create Wikidata items for agents and then link those 
queue numbers into and use them into our repository. There was a slide um, that I showed um, that had like authority, the agent record had links to authority sources. Um, so that would, one of those authority sources is Wikidata. Um, so. Yeah, thanks for sharing uh, the logistics about resources because um, that's that's one of the things that libraries uh, have to deal with is like, we want to do this, but how do we allocate resources to do it? Yeah, you know, with special collections, we're always seeking external funding and stuff. You know, most of the budgeted funds are going to the hard cost, you know, operation yep. buildings, and, you know, maintained to the club of the physical collections and stuff. So a lot of our projects are grant funded. So we, we're we constantly actively seeking out grant funding and stuff. Um, the next phase for us will be probably uh, seeking out for more money, bigger um, and um, to grow and to be able to sustain um, uh, an active wiki, uh, wiki data uh, presence within the archives. Yeah. Uh, well, we have four more minutes and one more question. Um, for your queries, have you found the statements being used in unexpected ways that significantly influence the results? Yeah, so um, the query on the mines of Nevada, for instance, um, that was the that was the query that actually enabled that just made me say, wait a second, I could use Sparkle as a way to develop programs. Because as you can see, if you go to our uh, Wikidata or PCC uh, UNLV page, uh, one of our sprints was the mines of Southern Nevada, and what we are able to do were connect collections that had the topics of mine and minings and things related to mines and stuff, we were able to connect it to the concept using that archives at property and stuff. So, um, and since then looking at our, our metrics, um, we've had so many article views. Um, well, let me see, well, let me, uh, da, da, da. oops. Project metrics. So, so far we've done, it looks like 413 total edits accounted for over 1.28 thousand article views. So, I mean, with our pilots, we've been really like experimenting with low, trying to get the low hanging fruit in our collections how to better expose it and how to build a better bandwidth and stuff. Uh, uh, it was very rooted in exploration, playing with tools, um, trying new things and seeing what we could learn. So um, our, our, our experience and my approach with the Wikimedia and residency, as well as in, uh, our contributions to the PCC pilot has been very exploratory. Yeah, thank you for that answer. That's a good note to end uh, this session. Go to Wikidata, explore, see what uh, queries you can do, what new knowledge you can find. Um, thanks so much, uh, Darnell and Bayan, for your presentations. And thanks, everybody um, who has participated in this session. I hope that everybody have a great rest of their conference. Thank you. And thank you all for uh, attending the presentation. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your conference. And please go to the Slack, Wikidata, Wikibase, uh, to continue these, these discussions. <laughs>